Thankfully, first watch stop. guys helps make I'll sure that I say never takes a backseat, even when we're washing our wallets. At the Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale, save up to $300 when you buy select tires with financing. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Limited time offer, terms and conditions apply. LesSchwab.com slash sale for details. Sure, we have 30 seconds to tell you that drivers who switch to Progressive could save big. But then what? Well, radio has been called theater of the mind, so let's tell a story with sound effects. <laughs> Wow, it's like I was in the story. Almost makes me forget this was supposed to be about saving big with Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. The free iHeartRadio app is number one for music, radio, and podcasts. All in one. Discover a new podcast from our library of over 350,000 titles. Here's an iHeartRadio podcast preview. When you think of the 1990s, you probably think of your favorite Nickelodeon cartoons, epic Spice Girl bops, and wacky snacks like Fruit Gushers. And you probably think of them fondly. But all the nostalgia around the 1990s has made us forget the rampant exploitation, violence, and tragedy that also characterized the decade. Not to say that we're excited to kill your idols, but we're excited to kill your idols. That includes the Chicago Bulls, the British Royal Family, and Beanie Babies. It'll be dark, disturbing, utterly gripping. And as always, it will feature the in-depth research you've come to expect from us. The Dark Side Of is a podcast original. Listen and follow this podcast for free on the iHeartRadio app. Number one for music, radio, and podcasts all in one. This is Lee Habib with Our American Stories, and we tell stories about everything here on the show, including your stories. Send them to OurAmericanStories.com. That's OurAmericanStories.com. Our next story is a story from a listener from Australia, of all places, and how he came to fall in love with a food that is uniquely American, the buffalo wing. My name's Colin Bettles. I'm uh, 50 years old, and currently I live in Sydney, Australia, which is uh, on the other side of the country, about 4,000 kilometres or 2,500 miles away from where I uh, grew up in Perth. At age 20, in 1990, I set off from Perth for a working holiday in the United Kingdom. I found my way uh, to be working in a bar in the London suburb of Kensington, um, where I worked in between playing cricket for the uh, London Theatres Cricket Club, uh, among others. And in that bar, we mingled with students from all over the world, and you know, we gained a different tuition on, on uh, each other's worlds over a few beverages at the bar, of course. And um, during this time, I made some very good friends, so um, I didn't have any great conviction about where I was going to travel to while I was on my working holiday, and so I decided to go to the US and visit some of these friends that I'd made while working in the bar. And my first stop was to stay with a guy named James, who I'd met, who was attending a place called Colgate University in a small college town called Hamilton in upstate New York. James lived across the road from a place called the Old Pizza Pub. Now, my very first uh, night that I stayed, um, they treated me to buffalo wings from there, and I'd never had them before in my life. Uh, in fact, I'd never even heard of them before, and they didn't have to do much to convince me to, to try them. And as they say, it was uh, love at first bite. I was hooked on this new taste sensation straight away. What I remember most about that first time experience was the tenderness of the chicken uh, that fell off the bone. It uh, didn't require, virtually required no chewing of the chicken meat and of course the um, tangy hot flavour sensation that uh, exploded in my mouth. And the blue cheese dip, I always remember just how smooth and creamy that was and how it complemented the hotness of the wings and enhanced the flavour. And basically that's where my uh, love affair with buffalo wings started and it continues to this day. My most memorable 
memorable experience with a wing. Well, as they say, there's nothing like the first time. So I, I think that first night um, with James and his college buddies eating wings for the first time at the farmhouse remains uh, my greatest and most lasting memory. But uh, I also have another strong memory um, that always brings a smile to my face, and that's actually an evening spent out with some of those Colgate Uni friends, James and Jeff, Charles and Fran, in New York City in 1992 for my 22nd birthday. And we stumbled upon a place by accident. I can't recall its name. In fact, there's quite a bit about the evening I can't recall. But this was a typical New York City dive bar. And while it was a dive bar, the upside was that they served these wings. And these wings were ranked on a scale according to their degree of hotness. Let's call it the chili factor and the serving at the top of this heat list was called the Chernobyl wing and it was a huge sized wing and they only allowed them to be served one at a time now this uh, serving restriction i may guess was a requirement that was applied to the bar by the local fire department or a nearby health facility <laughs> Now, common sense would tell you to avoid this sort of danger, but as they say, making mistakes is all just part of growing up, and down they went. It seemed like a fun idea at the time to dare each other to eat these ferociously hot wings that had more punch than the closing scenes of a Rocky movie, and to wash them down with one or two polite beverages. But uh, we definitely had a few regrets the next morning, and they lingered long into the next afternoon. Have I ever met a wing that I don't like? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> One of my pet hates is when the wings are served whole and they haven't been cut up into flats and drum pieces and the tips haven't been cut off and thrown away. Um, this tells me that there's a lazy and unsophisticated method behind these wings, that they've probably been pre-cooked and frozen, which means that the flavour is substandard and pretty bland, really. This is generally backed up by serving ranch sauce with the wings rather than authentic blue cheese dip or Lord forbid mayonnaise uh, or aioli sauce. Wings that are heavily baked in breadcrumbs are also just poor substitutes for the real thing. And uh, call me a wing snob if you like, um, but if they're not authentic and if they're not genuine and if they're not the real deal and made with a bit of love and a bit of time and care, then you're better off doing your taste buds a favour and going without. Is there an American food and do I think that food is the buffalo wing? Well, the answer is quite simply yes. Some people might look at the hot dog and the deep pan pizza in Chicago, but at the end of the day, they're just hybrids and they don't compare to the buffalo wing, which was born and raised in the USA. Um, the backstory to how the wing was invented on that famous Friday night at the Anchor Bar in 1964 proves that this great dish is purely American as it originated at the Anchor Bar. It didn't originate in Germany or Italy or even Australia. It was in upstate New York at the Anchor Bar and it goes a bit like this. Uh, Dominic Bellissimo was tending bar late that evening and a group of his friends arrived with a big appetite and uh, he asked his mother Teresa to prepare something for his friends to eat. Now she had some chicken wings which were normally preserved for soup uh, in the kitchen of the Anchor Bar and she deep fried them and flavoured them with a secret sauce. And of course they became an instant hit and a regular on the menu, uh, not just at the Anchor Bar, but all over the US and throughout the world. And uh, even in Australia now, they're very popular and becoming more and more popular. And you've been listening to Colin Bettles, and he's from Australia. He listens to our show in Australia, too. And by the way, America imports so many fine things around the world. Our ingenuity in every endeavor, including, of course, food. When we come back, more with Colin Bettles here on Our American Stories. this great country, and especially the stories of America's rich past, know that all of our stories about American history, from war to politics to innovation, culture, and faith, are brought to us by the great folks at Hillsdale College, a place where students study all the things that are beautiful in life and all the things that are good in life. 
But if you can't cut the hills down, 